Videotelephony comprises the technologies for the reception and transmission of audio-video signals by users at different locations, for communication between people in real time. A videophone is a telephone with a video display, capable of simultaneous video and audio for communication between people in real time. Videoconferencing implies the use of this technology for a group or organizational meeting rather than for individuals, in a videoconference. Telepresence may refer either to a high-quality videotelephony system where the goal is to create the illusion that remote participants are in the same room or to meet-up technology, which goes beyond video into robotics such as moving around the room or physically manipulating objects. Video conferencing has also been called visual collaboration and is a type of groupware. At the dawn of its commercial deployment from the 1950s through the 1990s, videotelephony also included image phones which would exchange still images between units every few seconds over conventional POTS-type telephone lines, essentially the same as slow-scan TV systems. The development of advanced video codecs, more powerful CPUs, and high-bandwidth Internet telecommunication services in the late 1990s allowed videophones to provide high-quality low-cost color service between users almost any place in the world that the Internet is available. Although not as widely used in everyday communications as audio-only and text communication, useful applications include sign language transmission for deaf and speech-impaired people, distance education, telemedicine, and overcoming mobility issues. It is also used in commercial and corporate settings to facilitate meetings and conferences, typically between parties that already have established relationships. News media organizations have begun to use desktop technologies like Skype to provide higher quality audio than the phone network, and video links at much lower cost than sending professional equipment or using a professional studio. More popular videotelephony technologies use the Internet rather than the traditional landline phone network, even accounting for modern digital packetized phone network protocols, and even though videotelephony software commonly runs on smartphones. Topic history The concept of videotelephony was first conceived in the late 1870s in both the United States and Europe, although the basic sciences to permit its very earliest trials would take nearly a half century to be discovered. This was first embodied in the device which came to be known as the video telephone, or videophone, and it evolved from intensive research and experimentation in several telecommunication fields, notably electrical telegraphy, telephony, radio, and television. Simple analog videophone communication could be established as early as the invention of the television. Such an antecedent usually consisted of two closed-circuit television systems connected via coax cable or radio. An example of that was the German Reich Postzentralamt Post Office video telephone network serving Berlin and several German cities via coaxial cables between 1936 and 1940. The development of video technology started in the latter half of the 1920s in the United Kingdom and the United States, spurred notably by John Logie Baird and AT&T's Bell Labs. This occurred in part, at least with AT&T, to serve as an adjunct supplementing the use of the telephone. A number of organizations believed that videotelephony would be superior to plain voice communications. However video technology was to be deployed in analog television broadcasting long before it could become practical, or popular, for videophones. During the first manned space flights, NASA used two radio frequency UHF or VHF video links, one in each direction. TV channels routinely use this type of videotelephony when reporting from distant locations. The news media were to become regular users of mobile links to satellites using specially equipped trucks, and much later via special satellite videophones in a briefcase. This technique was very expensive, though, and could not be used for applications such as telemedicine, distance education, and business meetings. Attempts at using normal telephony networks to transmit slow-scan video, such as the first systems developed by AT&T Corporation, first researched in the 1950s, failed mostly due to the poor picture quality and the lack of efficient video compression techniques. The greater 1 MHz bandwidth and 6 megabits per second bit rate of the AT&T picture phone in the 1970s also did not achieve commercial success, mostly due to its high cost, but also due to a lack of network effect. With only a few hundred picture phones in the world, users had extremely few contacts they could actually call to, and interoperability with other videophone systems would not exist for decades. Videotelephony developed in parallel with conventional voice telephone systems from the mid to late 20th century. 
Very expensive video conferencing systems rapidly evolved throughout the 1980s and 1990s from proprietary equipment, software, and network requirements to standards-based technologies that were available for anyone to purchase at a reasonable cost. Only in the late 20th century with the advent of powerful video codecs combined with high-speed Internet broadband and ISDN service did videotelephony become a practical technology for regular use. Topic practical digital videotelephony Practical digital videotelephony was only made possible with advances in video compression, due to the impractically high bandwidth requirements of uncompressed video. To achieve video graphics array VGA quality video 480p resolution and 256 colors with raw uncompressed video, it would require a bandwidth of over 92 megabits per second. The most important compression technique that enabled practical digital videotelephony and videoconferencing is the discrete cosine transform DCT. The DCT, a form of lossy compression, was conceived in 1972 by Nazir Ahmed, who developed the algorithm with T. Natarajan and K. R. Rao at the University of Texas in 1973. The DCT algorithm became the basis for the first practical video coding standard that was useful for online video conferencing, H.261, standardized by the ITUT in 1988, and subsequent H26X video coding standards. In the 1980s, digital telephony transmission networks became possible, such as with ISDN networks, assuring a minimum bit rate, usually 128 kilobits s, for compressed video and audio transmission. During this time, there was also research into other forms of digital video and audio communication. Many of these technologies, such as the media space, are not as widely used today as video conferencing but were still an important area of research. The first dedicated systems started to appear as ISDN networks were expanding throughout the world. One of the first commercial video conferencing systems sold to companies came from Picturetal Corp., which had an initial public offering in November, 1984. In 1984, Concept Communication in the United States replaced the then 100 pound, 100,000 United States dollars computers necessary for teleconferencing, with a $12,000 circuit board that doubled the video frame rate from 15 up to 30 frames per second, and which reduced the equipment to the size of a circuit board fitting into standard personal computers. The company also secured a patent for a codec for full motion videoconferencing, first demonstrated at AT&T Bell Labs in 1986. Video conferencing systems throughout the 1990s rapidly evolved from very expensive proprietary equipment, software, and network requirements to a standards-based technology readily available to the general public at a reasonable cost. Finally, in the 1990s, Internet Protocol-based video conferencing became possible, and more efficient video compression technologies were developed, permitting desktop, or personal computer based video conferencing. In 1992 CU Seam was developed at Cornell by Tim Dorsey et al. In 1995 the first public videoconference between North America and Africa took place, linking a technofair in San Francisco with a techno rave and cyberdeli in Cape Town. At the 1998 Winter Olympics opening ceremony in Nagano, Japan, Seiji Ozawa conducted the Ode to Joy from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony simultaneously across five continents in near real time. While videoconferencing technology was initially used primarily within internal corporate communication networks, one of the first community service usages of the technology started in 1992 through a unique partnership with Picturetal and IBM corporations which at the time were promoting a jointly developed desktop-based videoconferencing product known as the PCS-1. Over the next 15 years, Project Diane Diversified Information and Assistance Network grew to utilize a variety of video conferencing platforms to create a multi-state cooperative public service and distance education network consisting of several hundred schools, libraries, science museums, zoos and parks, and many other community-oriented organizations. Kyocera conducted a two-year development campaign from 1997 to 1999 that resulted in the release of the VP210 Visualphone, the first mobile color videophone that also doubled as a camera phone for still photos. The camera phone was the same size as similar contemporary mobile phones, but sported a large camera lens and a 5 cm color TFT display capable of displaying 65,000 colors, and was able to process two video frames per second. Video telephony was popularized in the 2000s via free Internet services such as Skype and iChat, web plugins supporting H26X video standards, and online telecommunication programs that promoted low cost, albeit lower quality, video conferencing to virtually every location with an Internet connection. 
With the rapid improvements and popularity of the Internet, videotelephony has become widespread through the deployment of video-enabled mobile phones, plus videoconferencing and computer webcams which utilize Internet telephony. In the upper echelons of government, business, and commerce, telepresence technology, an advanced form of videoconferencing, has helped reduce the need to travel. In May 2005, the first high definition video conferencing systems, produced by Life Size Communications, were displayed at the Interop Trade Show in Las Vegas, Nevada, able to provide video at 30 frames per second with a 1280 by 720 display resolution. Polycom introduced its first high-definition video conferencing system to the market in 2006. As of the 2010s, high-definition resolution for video conferencing became a popular feature, with most major suppliers in the video conferencing market offering it. Technological developments by video conferencing developers in the 2010s have extended the capabilities of video conferencing systems beyond the boardroom for use with handheld mobile devices that combine the use of video, audio and on-screen drawing capabilities broadcasting in real-time over secure networks, independent of location. Mobile collaboration systems now allow people in previously unreachable locations, such as workers on an offshore oil rig, the ability to view and discuss issues with colleagues thousands of miles away. Traditional video conferencing system manufacturers have begun providing mobile applications as well, such as those that allow for live and still image streaming. The highest ever video call other than those from aircraft and spacecraft took place on May 19, 2013, when British adventurer Daniel Hughes used a smartphone with a BGAN satellite modem to make a video call to the BBC from the summit of Mount Everest at 8848 meters, 29029 feet above sea level. Topic major categories Videotelephony can be categorized by its functionality, that is to its intended purpose, and also by its method of transmissions. Videophones were the earliest form of videotelephony, dating back to initial tests in 1927 by AT&T. During the late 1930s the post offices of several European governments established public videophone services for person-to-person -person communications utilizing dual cable circuit telephone transmission technology. In the present day standalone videophones and UMTS video enabled mobile phones are usually used on a person to person basis. Video conferencing saw its earliest use with AT&T's Picturephone service in the early 1970s. Transmissions were analog over short distances but converted to digital forms for longer calls again using telephone transmission technology. Popular corporate video conferencing systems in the present day have migrated almost exclusively to digital ISDN and IP transmission modes due to the need to convey the very large amounts of data generated by their cameras and microphones. These systems are often intended for use in conference mode, that is by many people in several different locations, all of whom can be viewed by every participant at each location. Telepresence systems are a newer, more advanced subset of video conferencing systems, meant to allow higher degrees of video and audio fidelity. Such high-end systems are typically deployed in corporate settings. Mobile collaboration systems are another recent development, combining the use of video, audio, and on-screen drawing capabilities using newest generation handheld electronic devices broadcasting over secure networks, enabling multi-party conferencing in real-time, independent of location. A more recent technology encompassing these functions is TV cams. TV cams enable people to make video phone calls using video calling services, like Skype on their TV, without using a PC connection. TV cams are specially designed video cameras that feed images in real time to another TV camera or other compatible computing devices like smartphones, tablets and computers. Webcams are popular, relatively low-cost devices which can provide live video and audio streams via personal computers, and can be used with many software clients for both video calls and video conferencing. Each of the systems has its own advantages and disadvantages, including video quality, capital cost, degrees of sophistication, transmission capacity requirements, and cost of use. Topic: Categories by cost and quality of service. From the least to the most expensive systems Web camera videophone and videoconferencing systems, either standalone or built SAN, that serve as complements to personal computers, connected to other participants by computer and VoIP networks, lowest direct cost assuming the users already possess computers at their respective locations. Quality of service can range from low to very high, including high-definition video available on the latest model webcams. 
A related and similar device is a TV camera which is usually small, sits on top of a TV, and can connect to it via its HDMI port, similar to how a webcam attaches to a computer via a USB port. Videophones, low to mid-range cost. The earliest standalone models operated over either plain POTS telephone lines on the PSTN telephone networks or more expensive ISDN lines, while newer models have largely migrated to Internet Protocol line service for higher image resolutions and sound quality. Quality of service for standalone videophones can vary from low to high. Video conferencing systems, mid-range cost, usually utilizing multipoint control units or other bridging services to allow multiple parties on a videoconference calls. Quality of service can vary from moderate to high. Telepresence systems, highest capabilities and highest cost. Full high-end systems can involve specially built teleconference rooms to allow expansive views with very high levels of audio and video fidelity, to permit an immersive video conference. When the proper type and capacity transmission lines are provided between facilities, the quality of service reaches state-of-the-art levels. Topic. Security concerns Computer security experts have shown that poorly configured or inadequately supervised video conferencing system can permit an easy, virtual, entry by computer hackers and criminals into company premises and corporate boardrooms, via their own video conferencing systems. Topic. Adoption For over a century, futurists have envisioned a future where telephone conversations will take place as actual face-to-face -face encounters with video as well as audio. Sometimes it is simply not possible or practical to have face-to-face -face meetings with two or more people. Sometimes a telephone conversation or conference call is adequate. Other times, email exchanges are adequate. However, video conferencing adds another possible alternative, and can be considered when a live conversation is needed. Non-verbal visual information is an important component of the conversation. The parties of the conversation can't physically come to the same location. The expense or time of travel is a consideration some observers argue that three outstanding issues have prevented video conferencing from becoming a widely adopted form of communication despite the ubiquity of video conferencing capable systems. Eye contact. Eye contact plays a large role in conversational turn taking, perceived attention and intent, and other aspects of group communication. While traditional telephone conversations give no eye contact cues, many video conferencing systems are arguably worse in that they provide an incorrect impression that the remote interlocutor is avoiding eye contact. Some telepresence systems have cameras located in the screens that reduce the amount of parallax observed by the users. This issue is also being addressed through research that generates a synthetic image with eye contact using stereo reconstruction. Telcordia Technologies, formerly Bell Communications Research, owns a patent for eye to eye video conferencing using rear projection screens with the video camera behind it, evolved from a 1960s U.S. military system that provided video conferencing services between the White House and various other government and military facilities. This technique eliminates the need for special cameras or image processing. Appearance consciousness, a second psychological problem with video conferencing is being on camera, with the video stream possibly even being recorded. The burden of presenting an acceptable on-screen appearance is not present in audio-only communication. Early studies by Alphonse Chapanis found that the addition of video actually impaired communication, possibly because of the consciousness of being on camera. Signal latency, the information transport of digital signals in many steps need time. In a telecommunicated conversation, an increased latency time lag larger than about 150 to 300 milliseconds becomes noticeable and is soon observed as unnatural and distracting. Therefore, next to a stable large bandwidth, a small total round-trip time is another major technical requirement for the communication channel for interactive video conferencing. Bandwidth and quality of service. In some countries it is difficult or expensive to get a high-quality connection that is fast enough for good quality video conferencing. Technologies such as ADSL have limited upload speeds and cannot upload and download simultaneously at full speed. As Internet speeds increase higher quality and high definition video conferencing will become more readily available. Complexity of systems – Most users are not technical and want a simple interface. 
In hardware systems, an unplugged cord or a dead battery in a remote control is seen as failure, contributing to a perceived unreliability. Successful systems are backed by support teams who can proactively support and provide fast assistance when required. Perceived lack of interoperability – Not all systems can readily interconnect, for example ISDN and IP systems require a gateway. Popular software solutions cannot easily connect to hardware systems. Some systems use different standards, features, and qualities which can require additional configuration when connecting to dissimilar systems. Free software systems circumvent this limitation by making it relatively easy for a single user to communicate over multiple incompatible platforms. Expense of commercial systems – Well-designed telepresence systems require specially designed rooms which can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to fit out their rooms with codecs, integration equipment such as multipoint control units, high-fidelity sound systems, and furniture. Monthly charges may also be required for bridging services and high-capacity broadband service. These are some of the reasons many systems are often used for internal corporate use only, as they are less likely to result in lost sales. One alternative to companies lacking dedicated facilities is the rental of videoconferencing equipped meeting rooms in cities around the world. Clients can book rooms and turn up for the meeting, with all technical aspects being prearranged and support being readily available if needed. The issue of eye contact may be solved with advancing technology, including smartphones which have the screen and camera in essentially the same place. The ubiquity of smartphones, tablet computers, and computers with built-in audio and webcams in developed countries obviates the need to buy expensive hardware. Topic: <laughs> Technology. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Components and types. The core technology used in a videotelephony system is digital compression of audio and video streams in real time. The hardware or software that performs compression is called a codec coder, decoder. Compression rates of up to 1 to 500 can be achieved. The resulting digital stream of ones and zeros is subdivided into labeled packets, which are then transmitted through a digital network of some kind usually ISDN or IP. The other components required for a videoconferencing system include Video input, PTZ, 360 degrees, fish eye, video camera, or webcam. Video output, computer monitor, television, or projector. Audio input, microphones, CD, DVD player, cassette player, or any other source of preamp audio outlet. Audio output, usually loudspeakers associated with the display device or telephone. Data transfer, analog or digital telephone network, LAN, or Internet. Computer, a data processing unit that ties together the other components, does the compressing and decompressing, and initiates and maintains the data linkage via the network. There are basically two kinds of video conferencing and videophone systems. Dedicated systems have all required components packaged into a single piece of equipment, usually a console with a high quality remote controlled video camera. These cameras can be controlled at a distance to pan left and right, tilt up and down, and zoom. They became known as PTZ cameras. The console contains all electrical interfaces, the control computer, and the software or hardware-based codec. Omnidirectional microphones are connected to the console, as well as a TV monitor with loudspeakers and or a video projector. There are several types of dedicated video conferencing devices. Large group video conferencing are built-in, large, expensive devices used for large rooms such as conference rooms and auditoriums. Small group video conferencing are either non-portable or portable, smaller, less expensive devices used for small meeting rooms. Individual video conferencing are usually portable devices, meant for single users, and have fixed cameras, microphones, and loudspeakers integrated into the console. Desktop systems are add-ons hardware boards or software codec to normal PCs and laptops, transforming them into video conferencing devices. A range of different cameras and microphones can be used with the codec, which contains the necessary codec and transmission interfaces. Most of the desktop systems work with the H.323 standard. WebRTC platforms are video conferencing solutions that are not resident by using a software application but is available through the standard web browser. Solutions such as Adobe Connect and Cisco WebEx can be accessed by going to a URL sent by the meeting organizer and various degrees of security can be attached to the virtual room. 
Often the user will be required to download a piece of software, called an add-in, to enable the browser to access the local camera, microphone and establish a connection to the meeting. WebRTC technology doesn't require any software or add-on installation, instead a WebRTC-compliant Internet browser itself acts as a client to facilitate one-to-one and one-to-many videoconferencing calls. Several enhanced flavors of WebRTC technology are being provided by third-party vendors. <laughs> videoconferencing modes Video conferencing systems use two methods to determine which video feed or feeds to display. Continuous presence simply displays all participants at the same time, usually with the exception that the viewer either does not see their own feed, or sees their own feed in miniature. Voice activated switch selectively chooses a feed to display at each endpoint, with the goal of showing the person who is currently speaking. This is done by choosing the feed other than the viewer, which has the loudest audio input, perhaps with some filtering to avoid switching for very short-lived volume spikes. Often if no remote parties are currently speaking, the feed with the last speaker remains on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Echo cancellation Acoustic echo cancellation AEC is a processing algorithm that uses the knowledge of audio output to monitor audio input and filter from it noises that echo back after some time delay. If unattended, these echoes can be re-amplified several times, leading to problems including the remote party hearing their own voice coming back at them usually significantly delayed strong reverberation, which makes the voice channel useless. Howling created by feedback echo cancellation is a processor-intensive task that usually works over a narrow range of sound delays. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Bandwidth requirements. Videophones have historically employed a variety of transmission and reception bandwidths, which can be understood as data transmission speeds. The lower the transmission reception bandwidth, the lower the data transfer rate, resulting in a progressively limited and poorer image quality, i.e. lower resolution and or frame rate. Data transfer rates and live video image quality are related, but are also subject to other factors such as data compression techniques. Some early video phones employed very low data transmission rates with a resulting poor video quality. Broadband bandwidth is often called high speed because it usually has a high rate of data transmission. In general, any connection of 256 kilobits per second, 0.256 megabits per second or greater is more concisely considered broadband Internet. The International Telecommunication Union Telecommunication Standardization Sector ITUT Recommendation I.113 has defined broadband as a transmission capacity at 1.5 to 2 megabits per second. The Federal Communications Commission United States definition of broadband is 25 megabits per second. Currently, adequate video for some purposes becomes possible at data rates lower than the ITUT broadband definition, with rates of 768 kilobits per second and 384 kilobits per second used for some video conferencing applications, and rates as low as 100 kilobits per second used for video phones using H.264, MPEG-4 AVC compression protocols. The newer MPEG-4 video and audio compression format can deliver high-quality video at 2 megabits per second, which is at the low end of cable modem and ADSL broadband performance. Topic: <laughs> Standards. The International Telecommunications Union (ITU) has three umbrellas of standards for video conferencing. ITU H.320 is known as the Standard for Public Switched Telephone Networks PSTN or Video Conferencing over Integrated Services Digital Networks. While still prevalent in Europe, ISDN was never widely adopted in the United States and Canada. ITU H.264 Scalable Video Coding SVC is a compression standard that enables video conferencing systems to achieve highly error-resilient Internet Protocol IP video transmissions over the public Internet without quality of service enhanced lines. This standard has enabled wide-scale deployment of high-definition desktop video conferencing and made possible new architectures, which reduces latency between the transmitting sources and receivers, resulting in more fluid communication without pauses. 
In addition, an attractive factor for IP videoconferencing is that it is easier to set up for use along with web conferencing and data collaboration. These combined technologies enable users to have a richer multimedia environment for live meetings, collaboration and presentations. ITU v.80, video conferencing is generally compatibilized with H.324 standard point-to-point videotelephony over regular plain old telephone service POTS phone lines, the Unified Communications Interoperability Forum UCIF, a non-profit alliance between communications vendors, launched in May 2010. The organization's vision is to maximize the interoperability of UC based on existing standards. Founding members of UCIF include HP, Microsoft, Polycom, Logitech, Lifesize Communications, and Juniper Networks. Topic. Call setup Video conferencing in the late 20th century was limited to the H.323 protocol notably Cisco's SCCP implementation was an exception, but newer videophones often use SIP, which is often easier to set up in home networking environments. It is a text-based protocol, incorporating many elements of the Hypertext Transfer Protocol and the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol H.323 is still used, but more commonly for business video conferencing, while SIP is more commonly used in personal consumer video phones. A number of call setup methods based on instant messaging protocols such as Skype also now provide video. Another protocol used by video phones is H.324, which mixes call setup and video compression. Video phones that work on regular phone lines typically use H.324, but the bandwidth is limited by the modem to around 33 kilobits per second, limiting the video quality and frame rate. A slightly modified version of H.324 called 3G324M defined by 3GPP is also used by some cell phones that allow video calls, typically for use only in UMTS networks. There is also H.320 standard, which specified technical requirements for narrow band visual telephone systems and terminal equipment, typically for video conferencing and videophone services. It applied mostly to dedicated circuit-based switched network point -to -point connections of moderate or high bandwidth, such as through the medium bandwidth ISDN digital phone protocol or a fractionated high bandwidth T1 lines. Modern products based on H.320 standard usually support also H.323 standard. The IAX2 protocol also supports videophone calls natively, using the protocol's own capabilities to transport alternate media streams. A few hobbyists obtained the Nortel 1535 color SIP videophone cheaply in 2010 as surplus after Nortel's bankruptcy and deployed the sets on the Asterisk PBX platform. While additional software is required to patch together multiple video feeds for conference calls or convert between dissimilar video standards, SIP calls between two identical handsets within the same PBX were relatively straightforward. Topic. Conferencing layers The components within a video conferencing system can be divided up into several different layers, user interface, conference control, control or signaling plane, and media plane. Video conferencing user interfaces can be either graphical or voice responsive. Many in the industry have encountered both types of interfaces, and normally graphical interfaces are encountered on a computer. User interfaces for conferencing have a number of different uses, they can be used for scheduling, setup, and making a video call. Through the user interface the administrator is able to control the other three layers of the system. Conference control performs resource allocation, management, and routing. This layer along with the user interface creates meetings scheduled or, unscheduled, or adds and removes participants from a conference. Control signaling plane contains the stacks that signal different endpoints to create a call and or a conference. Signals can be, but aren't limited to, H.323 and Session Initiation Protocol SIP protocols. These signals control incoming and outgoing connections as well as session parameters. The media plane controls the audio and video mixing and streaming. This layer manages real-time transport protocols, user datagram packets UDP, and real-time transport control protocol RTCP. The RTP and UDP normally carry information such the payload type which is the type of codec, frame rate, video size, and many others. RTCP on the other hand acts as a quality control protocol for detecting errors during streaming. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Multipoint video conferencing. Simultaneous video conferencing among three or more remote points is possible in a hardware-based system by means of a multipoint control unit (MCU). This is a bridge that interconnects calls from several sources in a similar way to the audio conference call. All parties call the MCU, or the MCU can also call the parties which are going to participate, in sequence. There are MCU bridges for IP and ISDN-based videoconferencing. There are MCUs which are pure software, and others which are a combination of hardware and software. An MCU is characterized according to the number of simultaneous calls it can handle, its ability to conduct transposing of data rates and protocols, and features such as continuous presence, in which multiple parties can be seen on screen at once. MCUs can be standalone hardware devices, or they can be embedded into dedicated videoconferencing units. The MCU consists of two logical components. A single multipoint controller MC, and Multipoint processors MP, sometimes referred to as the mixer, the MC controls the conferencing while it is active on the signaling plane, which is simply where the system manages conferencing creation, endpoint signaling and in conferencing controls. This component negotiates parameters with every endpoint in the network and controls conferencing resources. While the MC controls resources and signaling negotiations, the MP operates on the media plane and receives media from each endpoint. The MP generates output streams from each endpoint and redirects the information to other endpoints in the conference. Some systems are capable of multipoint conferencing with no MCU, standalone, embedded or otherwise. These use a standards-based H.323 technique known as decentralized multipoint, where each station in a multipoint call exchanges video and audio directly with the other stations with no central manager or other bottleneck. The advantages of this technique are that the video and audio will generally be of higher quality because they don't have to be relayed through a central point. Also, users can make ad hoc multipoint calls without any concern for the availability or control of an MCU. This added convenience and quality comes at the expense of some increased network bandwidth, because every station must transmit to every other station directly. Topic. Cloud-based video conferencing Cloud-based video conferencing can be used without the hardware generally required by other video conferencing systems, and can be designed for use by SMEs, or larger international or multinational corporations like Facebook. Cloud-based systems can handle either 2D or 3D video broadcasting. Cloud-based systems can also implement mobile calls, VoIP, and other forms of video calling. They can also come with a video recording function to archive past meetings. Topic. Impact High-speed Internet connectivity has become more widely available at a reasonable cost and the cost of video capture and display technology has decreased. Consequently, personal video conferencing systems based on a webcam, personal computer system, software compression, and broadband internet connectivity have become progressively more affordable to the general public. Also, the hardware used for this technology has continued to improve in quality, and prices have dropped dramatically. The availability of freeware, often as part of chat programs, has made software-based video conferencing accessible to many. The widest deployment of video telephony now occurs in mobile phones. Nearly all mobile phones supporting UMTS networks can work as videophones using their internal cameras, and are able to make video calls wirelessly to other UMTS users in the same country or internationally. As of the second quarter of 2007, there are over 131 million UMTS users and hence potential videophone users, on 134 networks in 59 countries. Mobile phones can also use broadband wireless internet, whether through the cell phone network or over a local Wi-Fi connection, along with software-based videophone apps to make calls to any video-capable internet user, whether mobile or fixed. Deaf, hard of hearing, and mute individuals have a particular role in the development of affordable high-quality videotelephony as a means of communicating with each other in sign language. Unlike video relay service, which is intended to support communication between a caller using sign language and another party using spoken language, videoconferencing can be used directly between two deaf signers. 
Videophones are increasingly used in the provision of telemedicine to the elderly, disabled, and to those in remote locations, where the ease and convenience of quickly obtaining diagnostic and consultative medical services are readily apparent. In one single instance quoted in 2006, a nurse-led clinic at Lethem has received positive feedback on a trial of a video link which allowed 60 pensioners to be assessed by medics without traveling to a doctor's office or medical clinic. A further improvement in telemedical services has been the development of new technology incorporated into special videophones to permit remote diagnostic services, such as blood sugar level, blood pressure, and vital signs monitoring. Such units are capable of relaying both regular audio video plus medical data over either standard POTS telephone or newer broadband lines. Video telephony has also been deployed in corporate teleconferencing, also available through the use of public access video conferencing rooms. A higher level of video conferencing that employs advanced telecommunication technologies and high resolution displays is called telepresence. Today the principles, if not the precise mechanisms, of a videophone are employed by many users worldwide in the form of webcam video calls using personal computers, with inexpensive webcams, microphones, and free video calling web client programs. Thus an activity that was disappointing as a separate service has found a niche as a minor feature in software products intended for other purposes. According to Juniper Research, smartphone videophone users will reach 29 million by 2015 globally. A study conducted by Pew Research in 2010 revealed that 7% of Americans have made a mobile video call. Topic: <laughs> Impact on government and law. In the United States, video conferencing has allowed testimony to be used for an individual who is unable or prefers not to attend the physical legal settings, or would be subjected to severe psychological stress in doing so. However, there is a controversy on the use of testimony by foreign or unavailable witnesses via video transmission, regarding the violation of the Confrontation Clause of the Sixth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. In a military investigation in North Carolina, Afghan witnesses have testified via video conferencing. In Hall County, Georgia, video conferencing systems are used for initial court appearances. The systems link jails with courtrooms, reducing the expenses and security risks of transporting prisoners to the courtroom. The U.S. Social Security Administration, SSA, which oversees the world's largest administrative judicial system under its Office of Disability Adjudication and Review, ODAR, has made extensive use of video conferencing to conduct hearings at remote locations. In fiscal year FY 2009, the U.S. Social Security Administration SSA conducted 86,320 videoconferenced hearings, a 55% increase over FY 2008. In August 2010, the SSA opened its fifth and largest videoconferencing-only National Hearing Center NHC, in St. Louis, Missouri. This continues the SSA's effort to use video hearings as a means to clear its substantial hearing backlog. Since 2007, the SSA has also established NHCs in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Baltimore, Maryland, Falls Church, Virginia, and Chicago. Topic: <laughs> Impact on education. Video conferencing provides students with the opportunity to learn by participating in two-way communication forums. Furthermore, teachers and lecturers worldwide can be brought to remote or otherwise isolated educational facilities. Students from diverse communities and backgrounds can come together to learn about one another through practices known as telecollaboration in foreign language education and virtual exchange, although language barriers will continue to be present. Such students are able to explore, communicate, analyze, and share information and ideas with one another. Through video conferencing, students can visit other parts of the world to speak with their peers, as well as visit museums and other cultural and educational facilities. Such virtual field trips can provide enriched learning opportunities to students, especially those in geographically isolated locations, and to the economically disadvantaged. Small schools can use these technologies to pool resources and provide courses, such as in foreign languages, which could not otherwise be offered. A few examples of benefits that video conferencing can provide in campus environments include Faculty members keeping in touch with classes while attending conferences Faculty members attending conferences, virtually Guest lecturers brought in classes from other institutions 
researchers collaborating with colleagues at other institutions on a regular basis without loss of time due to travel. Schools with multiple campuses collaborating and sharing professors. Schools from two separate nations engaging in cross-cultural exchanges. Faculty members participating in thesis defenses at other institutions. Administrators on tight schedules collaborating on budget preparation from different parts of campus. Faculty committee auditioning scholarship candidates. Researchers answering questions about grant proposals from agencies or review committees. Student interviews with employers in other cities, and teleseminars. Topic. Impact on medicine and health Video conferencing is a highly useful technology for real-time telemedicine and telenursing applications, such as diagnosis, consulting, transmission of medical images, etc. With video conferencing, patients may contact nurses and physicians in emergency or routine situations. Physicians and other paramedical professionals can discuss cases across large distances. Rural areas can use this technology for diagnostic purposes, thus saving lives and making more efficient use of health care money. For example, a rural medical center in Ohio used video conferencing to successfully cut the number of transfers of sick infants to a hospital 70 miles away. This had previously cost nearly $10,000 per transfer. Special peripherals such as microscopes fitted with digital cameras, video endoscopes, medical ultrasound imaging devices, otoscopes, etc., can be used in conjunction with video conferencing equipment to transmit data about a patient. Recent developments in mobile collaboration on handheld mobile devices have also extended video conferencing capabilities to locations previously unreachable, such as a remote community, long-term care facility, or a patient's home. <laughs> Impact on business Video conferencing can enable individuals in distant locations to participate in meetings on short notice, with time and money savings. Technology such as VoIP can be used in conjunction with desktop video conferencing to enable low-cost face-to-face business meetings without leaving the desk, especially for businesses with widespread offices. The technology is also used for telecommuting, in which employees work from home. One research report based on a sampling of 1,800 corporate employees showed that, as of June 2010, 54% of the respondents with access to video conferencing used it, all of the time, or frequently. Intel Corporation have used video conferencing to reduce both costs and environmental impacts of its business operations. Video conferencing is also currently being introduced on online networking websites, in order to help businesses form profitable relationships quickly and efficiently without leaving their place of work. This has been leveraged by banks to connect busy banking professionals with customers in various locations using video banking technology. Video conferencing on handheld mobile devices mobile collaboration technology is being used in industries such as manufacturing, energy, healthcare, insurance, government, and public safety. Live, visual interaction removes traditional restrictions of distance and time, often in locations previously unreachable, such as a manufacturing plant floor thousands of miles away. In the increasingly globalized film industry, video conferencing has become useful as a method by which creative talent in many different locations can collaborate closely on the complex details of film production. For example, for the 2013 award-winning animated film Frozen, Burbank-based Walt Disney Animation Studios hired the New York City-based husband and wife songwriting team of Robert Lopez and Kristen Anderson Lopez to write the songs, which required two-hour-long transcontinental video conferences nearly every weekday for about 14 months. With the development of lower-cost endpoints, cloud-based infrastructure and technology trends such as WebRTC, video conferencing is moving from just a business to business offering, to a business to business and business-to-consumer offering. Although video conferencing has frequently proven its value, research has shown that some non-managerial employees prefer not to use it due to several factors, including anxiety. Some such anxieties can be avoided if managers use the technology as part of the normal course of business. Remote workers can also adopt certain behaviors and best practices to stay connected with their co-workers and company. Researchers also find that attendees of business and medical video conferences must work harder to interpret information delivered during a conference than they would if they attended face to face. They recommend that those coordinating video conferences make adjustments to their conferencing procedures and equipment. Topic: 
Topic: <laughs> Impact on media relations. The concept of press video conferencing was developed in October 2007 by the Pan African Press Association, APA, a Paris, France-based non-governmental organization, to allow African journalists to participate in international press conferences on developmental and good governance issues. Press video conferencing permits international press conferences via video conferencing over the internet. Journalists can participate on an international press conference from any location without leaving their offices or countries. They need only be seated by a computer connected to the Internet in order to ask their questions to the speaker. In 2004, the International Monetary Fund introduced the Online Media Briefing Center, a password-protected site available only to professional journalists. The site enables the IMF to present press briefings globally and facilitates direct questions to briefers from the press. The site has been copied by other international organizations since its inception. More than 4,000 journalists worldwide are currently registered with the IMF. Topic use in sign language communications One of the first demonstrations of the ability for telecommunications to help sign language users communicate with each other occurred when AT&T's Videophone trademarked as the Picturephone was introduced to the public at the 1964 New York World's Fair Two deaf users were able to communicate freely with each other between the fair and another city. Various universities and other organizations, including British Telecom's Martlesham facility, have also conducted extensive research on signing via videotelephony. The use of sign language via videotelephony was hampered for many years due to the difficulty of its use over slow analog copper phone lines, coupled with the high cost of better quality ISDN data phone lines. Those factors largely disappeared with the introduction of more efficient and powerful video codecs and the advent of lower-cost high-speed ISDN data and IP Internet services in the 1990s. Topic: 21st century improvements. Significant improvements in video call quality of service for the deaf occurred in the United States in 2003 when Sorensen Media Inc. formerly Sorensen Vision Inc., a video compression software coding company, developed its VP100 model standalone videophone specifically for the deaf community. It was designed to output its video to the user's television in order to lower the cost of acquisition, and to offer remote control and a powerful video compression codec for unequaled video quality and ease of use with video relay services. Favorable reviews quickly led to its popular usage at educational facilities for the deaf, and from there to the greater deaf community. Coupled with similar high quality video phones introduced by other electronics manufacturers, the availability of high speed Internet, and sponsored video relay services authorized by the U.S. Federal Communications Commission in 2002, VRS services for the deaf underwent rapid growth in the country. Present-day usage Using such video equipment in the present day, the deaf, hard of hearing, and speech impaired can communicate between themselves and with hearing individuals using sign language. The United States and several other countries compensate companies to provide video relay services (VRS). Telecommunication equipment can be used to talk to others via a sign language interpreter, who uses a conventional telephone at the same time to communicate with the deaf person's party. Video equipment is also used to do on-site sign language translation via video remote interpreting The relative low cost and widespread availability of 3G mobile phone technology with video calling capabilities have given deaf and speech-impaired users a greater ability to communicate with the same ease as others. Some wireless operators have even started free sign language gateways. Sign language interpretation services via VRS or by VRI are useful in the present day where one of the parties is deaf, hard of hearing, or speech impaired mute. In such cases the interpretation flow is normally within the same principal language, such as French Sign Language LSF to Spoken French, Spanish Sign Language LSE to Spoken Spanish, British Sign Language BSL to Spoken English, and American Sign Language ASL also to Spoken English since BSL and ASL are completely distinct to each other, German Sign Language DGS to Spoken German, and so on. 
multilingual sign language interpreters, who can also translate as well across principal languages such as a multilingual interpreter interpreting a call from a deaf person using ASL to reserve a hotel room at a hotel in the Dominican Republic whose staff speaks Spanish only, therefore the interpreter has to utilize ASL, spoken Spanish, and spoken English to facilitate the call for the deaf person, are also available, albeit less frequently. Such activities involve considerable mental processing efforts on the part of the translator, since sign languages are distinct natural languages with their own construction, semantics and syntax, different from the oral version of the same principal language. With video interpreting, sign language interpreters work remotely with live video and audio feeds, so that the interpreter can see the deaf or mute party, and converse with the hearing party, and vice versa. Much like telephone interpreting, video interpreting can be used for situations in which no on-site interpreters are available. However, video interpreting cannot be used for situations in which all parties are speaking via telephone alone. VRS and VRI interpretation requires all parties to have the necessary equipment. Some advanced equipment enables interpreters to control the video camera remotely, in order to zoom in and out or to point the camera toward the party that is signing. Topic descriptive names and terminology The name videophone never became as standardized as its earlier counterpart telephone, resulting in a variety of names and terms being used worldwide, and even within the same region or country. Videophones are also known as video phones, video telephones, or video telephones, and often by an early trademark name picturephone, which was the world's first commercial videophone produced in volume. The compound name videophone slowly entered into general use after 1950, although video telephone likely entered the lexicon earlier after video was coined in 1935. Videophone calls also video calls, video chat as well as Skype and Skyping in verb form differ from video conferencing in that they expect to serve individuals, not groups. However, that distinction has become increasingly blurred with technology improvements such as increased bandwidth and sophisticated software clients that can allow for multiple parties on a call. In general everyday usage the term video conferencing is now frequently used instead of video call for point to point calls between two units. Both video phone calls and video conferencing are also now commonly referred to as a video link. Webcams are popular, relatively low cost devices which can provide live video and audio streams via personal computers and can be used with many software clients for both video calls and video conferencing. A video conference system is generally higher cost than a video phone and deploys greater capabilities. A video conference, also known as a video teleconference, allows two or more locations to communicate via live, simultaneous two-way video and audio transmissions. This is often accomplished by the use of a multipoint control unit, a centralized distribution and call management system, or by a similar non-centralized multipoint capability embedded in each video conferencing unit. Again, technology improvements have circumvented traditional definitions by allowing multiple party video conferencing via web-based applications. A telepresence system is a high-end video conferencing system and service usually employed by enterprise-level corporate offices. Telepresence conference rooms use state-of-the-art room designs, video cameras, displays, sound systems and processors, coupled with high to very high capacity bandwidth transmissions. Typical use of the various technologies described above include calling or conferencing on a one-on-one, -on -one, one to many or many-to-many -many basis for personal, business, educational, deaf video relay service and telemedical, diagnostic and rehabilitative use or services. New services utilizing video calling and video conferencing, such as teachers and psychologists conducting online sessions, personal video calls to inmates incarcerated in penitentiaries, and video conferencing to resolve airline engineering issues at maintenance facilities, are being created or evolving on an ongoing basis. Other names for videophone that have been used in English are, Viewphone the British telecom equivalent to AT&T's Picturephone, and Visiophone, a common French translation that has also crept into limited English usage, as well as over 20 less common names and expressions. Latin-based translations of videophone in other languages include Videophone French, Bildtelefon German, Videotelefono Italian, both Videofono and Videotelefono Spanish, both Bildtelfon and Videofon Dutch, and Videofonia Catalan. A telepresence robot also telerobotics, is a robotically controlled and motorized video conferencing display to help give a better sense of remote physical presence for communication and collaboration in an office, home, school, etc. When one cannot be there in person. The robotic avatar device can move about and look around at the command of the remote person it represents. 
Topic popular culture in science fiction literature, names commonly associated with videophones include telephonoscope, telephote, viewphone, vidphone, vidphone, and visiphone. The first example was probably the cartoon Edison's Telephonoscope by George du Maurier in Punch 1878. In many science fiction movies and TV programs that are set in the future, videophones were used as a primary method of communication. One of the first movies where a videophone was used was Fritz Lang's Metropolis 1927. .Other notable examples of videophones in popular culture include an iconic scene from the 1968 film 2001, A Space Odyssey set on Space Station V. The movie was released shortly before AT&T began its efforts to commercialize its Picturephone Mod 2 service in several cities and depicts a video call to Earth using an advanced AT&T videophone, which it predicts will cost $1.70 for a two-minute call in 2001 a fraction of the company's real rates on Earth in 1968. Film director Stanley Kubrick strove for scientific accuracy, relying on interviews with scientists and engineers at Bell Labs in the United States. Dr. Larry Rabina of Bell Labs, discussing videophone research in the documentary 2001, The Making of a Myth, stated that in the mid to late 1960s videophones, captured the imagination of the public and, of Mr. Kubrick and the people who reported to him. In one 2001 movie scene a central character, Dr. Haywood Floyd, calls home to contact his family, a social feature noted in The Making of a Myth. Floyd talks with and views his daughter from a space station in orbit above the Earth, discussing what type of present he should bring home for her. A portable videophone is also featured prominently in the 2009 science fiction movie Moon, where the story's protagonist, Sam Bell, also calls home as well to communicate with loved ones. Bell, the lone occupant of a mining station on the far side of the Earth's moon, finally succeeds in making his video call after an extended work period, but becomes traumatized when viewing his daughter. Other popular science fiction works with videophones include the films Space, 1999, Total Recall, and Blade Runner, and the series Star Trek, and all its franchise successes, Max Headroom, and Firefly. The videophone was also a staple, everyday technology in the futuristic 1960s Hanna Barbera cartoon The Jetsons. Other earlier examples of videophones in popular culture included a videophone that was featured in the Warner Bros. cartoon, Plain Daffy, in which the female spy Hatta Mari used a videophone to communicate with Adolf Hitler 1944, as well as a device with the same functionality has been used by the comic strip character Dick Tracy. Called the two-way wrist TV, the fictional detective often used the phone to communicate with police headquarters 1964-1977. By the early 2010s videotelephony and videophones had become commonplace and unremarkable in various forms of media, in part due to their real and ubiquitous presence in common electronic devices and laptop computers. Additionally, TV programming increasingly utilized videophones to interview subjects of interest and to present live coverage by news correspondents, via the Internet or by satellite links. In the mass market media, the popular US TV talk show hostess Oprah Winfrey incorporated videotelephony into her TV program on a regular basis from May 21, 2009, with an initial episode called Where the Skype Are You, as part of a marketing agreement with the internet telecommunication company Skype. Additionally, videophones have been featured in EM. Forster's 1909 short story The Machine Stops is set in a dystopian future in which, for the most part, human interaction has been reduced to communication via a kind of videoconferencing device called the speaking apparatus. The 1935 British sci fi film, The Tunnel, in which a videophone device termed a televisor is in common use in the mid 20th century. Several episodes of Thunderbirds. 1965 these were shown to also have an audio-only setting, which was indicated by the words sound-only selected being displayed on the screen. The British cartoon Danger Mouse, where the title character regularly communicated with headquarters via videophones from both his home and his car 1981 to 1992. The movie Gremlins 2, The New Batch, where AT&T's Videophone 2500 prototypes are visible 1990. The 1991 French-German film, Until the End of the World, in which videophone and videofax devices are shown intermittently. Intermittently, Lisa's Wedding, an episode of The Simpsons which depicted a picture phone 1995, the popular television series Pee Wee's Playhouse, Pee Wee Herman often made and received calls on a videophone like Magic Screen 1986 to 1990, the movie Back to the Future Part 2, where the future Marty McFly is contacted by Needles, his co-worker, and then by his boss Mr. Fujitsu, via videophone 1989, the movie Demolition Man, where the action was referred to as Fiberop, the movie Spaceballs, which used the potential 
intentional intrusiveness to humorous effect. The movie Aliens, in the early scenes on the space station, the movie Seven Days in May made in 1964, in which the President of the United States uses a videophone in the near future early 1970s, the novel Infinite Jest, where the videophone specifically the fall of the videophone is spoken of extensively 1996, the animated television program Futurama, where the videophone is often used within the delivery service spaceship 1999 to 2013, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Turtlecom cell phone devices have video phones on them and are often used by the four mutant turtles to contact April O'Neil. Shredder, Krang, Rocksteady, and Bebop also use video phones on their cell phone devices. Reboot 1994 TV series. Video phones are often used by Bob, Dot, Enzo, and Megabyte to contact each other in the city mainframe. The Pokemon anime series, where video phones were occasionally used, 2006 to 2011, a Beyoncé Knowles pop single and music video called "Video Phone" from her album I Am. Sasha Fierce, 2008. Topic. See also. 3GP and 3G2 H.331 Information appliance List of video telecommunication services and product brands Media phone Mobile VoIP Press video conferencing Project Diane, a large U.S. business and social services video conferencing network Smartphone Telecollaboration Teleconference Telephony, the ancestral technology Teletraining U.S. Soviet Space Bridge Visual Communication VROC Virtual Researcher on Call Web Conferencing Topic Notes Topic bibliography Santanu Brahma and Axlater Communications Audio Video Telephony, Real Time Updates and News about Web RTC Technology and Browser Based Audio and Video Telephony. Burns, R. W., Television, An International History of the Formative Years in IEE Publication Series, Institution of Electrical Engineers, Science Museum, Great Britain, 1998, ISBN 0-85296-914-7, ISBN 978-0-85296-914-4 for Daly, Edward A. and Hansel, Kathleen J. Visual Telephony, Artec House, Boston, 1999, ISBN 1-58053-023-0, ISBN 978 one five eight zero five three zero two three one CIPDHD nine six nine seven T four five two D three five six hundred and fifty one point seven three DC twenty one Mulbach Lothar Bocker Martin Prusig Angela nineteen ninety five Telepresence in video communications: a study on stereoscopy and individual eye contact. Human factors thirty seven two two hundred and ninety to three hundred and five. DOI 10.1518/001872095779064582 ISSN 0018-7208. PMID 7642183 Nellist, John G. Understanding Telecommunications and Lightwave Systems: An Entry Level Guide. John Wiley and Sons, IEEE Press, 2002. ISBN 0 471 15032 0, ISBN 978 0 471 15032 9. Schnars, Steve, Wimes, Cliff. 2004. On the Persistence of Lackluster Demand The History of the Video Telephone. Technological Forecasting and Social Change. 71 3, 197 216. DOI 10.1016/S00401625020-00410-9. Archived from the original on the 11th of January 2013. Shepard, Stephen. Video conferencing demystified: Making video services work. McGraw Hill Professional, 2002. ISBN 0-07-140085-0. ISBN 9780074085-5. Stevenson Bacon. W. Amazing new picture phone. A step closer to in-person visits. Popular Science, June 1968, pp. 46 to 47. Valinder, Anne. Like a window in your living room, video mediated communication for extended families separated by space, University of Gothenburg, Department of Applied Information Technology, pp. 6 18, October 5, 2012. Web. January 23, 2013. PDF. 
Wilcox, James R. N. Gibson, David K. Video Communications, The Whole Picture, Focal Press, CMP Books, San Francisco, 2005, ISBN 1-57820-316-3, ISBN 978-1-57820-316-1. Topic. Further reading Topic. Unsorted Greenberg, Alan D. Taking the Wraps Off Videoconferencing in the U.S. Classroom, Waynehouse Research, April 2009 Kopitoff, Vern G. Hewlett-Packard Sells Its Video Conferencing Business, The New York Times, June 1, 2011 Lawler, Julia. Videoconferencing, From Stage Fright to Stage Presence, The New York Times, August 27, 1998. Law, Steve. As travel costs rise, more meetings go virtual, The New York Times, July 22, 2008. Miller, Claire Kane. Logitech Buying a Maker of Videoconference Tools, The New York Times, November 11, 2009. Miller, Claire Kane. Logitech Breaks into Video Conferencing, The New York Times, November 10, 2009 online, and November 11, 2009 in print, p. b3. Discusses the acquisition of life-size communications. Millman, Howard. The Video Conference as a Bicoastal Pas de Deux, The New York Times, July 12, 2001. O'Brien, Kevin. Stranded Travelers Turn to Video Conferencing, The New York Times, April 19, 2010. Article discusses the increased use of videoconferencing due to the eruption of an Icelandic volcano which severely curtailed air travel for several months. Ramirez, Anthony. More than just a phone call, videoconferencing and photocopies, 2, The New York Times, September 15, 1993. Discusses the deployment of videoconferencing rooms in several hundred Kinko's locations. Shannon, Victoria. Videoconferencing's Virtual Leap Forward, The New York Times, August 29, 2007. Sharkey, Joe. A Meeting in New York? Can't We Videoconference? The New York Times, May 11, 2009 online, and in print on May 12, 2009, p. b6 of the New York edition. Vance, Ashley. Cisco buys Norwegian firm for $3 billion, The New York Times, October 1, 2009 online, and October 2, 2009 in print, p. b7. Discusses the acquisition of Tanberg. Wong, says open source tool detects video conferencing equipment vulnerabilities, help net security, 17 February 2012. Weiner, Peter. Jerky pictures and sound are history. Video conferencing is all grown up. The New York Times, June 16, 2005. Topic: General. Adashina, Emmanuel. In-person visits fade as jails set up video units for inmates and families. The New York Times website, August 7, 2012, PG. A15 of the New York edition. Bahaj, Vikas. Transparent Government, via Webcams in India, The New York Times, July 18, 2011, pg. b3. Published online, July 17, 2011. Davis, Andrew W., Weinstein, Ira M. The Business Case for Videoconferencing, Waynehouse Research, March 2005. Fairley, Rick. Skype puts video calls on your TV, The New York Times, July 2, 2010. Hoffman, Jan, When Your Therapist Is Only a Click Away, The New York Times, September 25, 2011, pg. ST1. Also published September 23, 2011 online at www.nytimes.com. Miller, Hugh. Video Phones, The Real Problem. Archived from the original on 16 June 2002. Retrieved 16 June 2002, CS1 maint, bot, original URL status unknown link, Department of Social Sciences, Nottingham Trent University, June 16, 2002. Discusses social issues related to videotelephony. Pearlroth, Nicole. Cameras may open up the boardroom to hackers, The New York Times Online, January 22, 2012. A version of this article appeared in print on January 23, 2012, on page B1 of the New York edition with the headline, Conferences via the Net Called Risky. Proav Magazine. Being there, Proav Magazine, November 7, 2008. St. Louis, Catherine. 
With enough bandwidth, many join the band. The New York Times, January 10, 2012, online, January 11, 2012, in print, New York edition, pg. A1. Retrieved online January 11, 2012. Synopsis, a look at the pros and cons of videotelephony used for private, individual, music lessons. Steinberg, Neil. Dude, Where's My Video Phone? Forbes. Com website, October 15, 2007. Topic. Environmental benefits BLO, David. Can videoconferencing replace travel? Scientific American, March 18, 2009. Koroama, VC, et al., Effects of Internet-Based Multiple Site Conferences on Greenhouse Gas Emissions, Telematics and Informatics, 2011, DOI, 10.1016-j.tele.2011.11.0006 Pachner, Joanna. The Next Best Thing to Being There, Toronto, The Globe and Mail, October 13, 2009. Topic Historical and Technical Ebel, H. Subjective Assessment of Picture Interference in the Videophone in Fourth International Symposium on Human Factors in Telephony, Bad We See, Germany, September 23–27, 1968, Information Gatekeepers Inc., pp. 289–298. Fisher, K., Ebel, H., Problems of How to Position Users in Front of the Videophone in, Fourth International Symposium on Human Factors in Telephony, Bad We See, Germany, September 23–27, 1968, Information Gatekeepers Inc., pp. 269–282. Hall, A. D. Experiments with Picturephone Service in, Bell Laboratories Record, 1964, Volume 42, pp. 114–120. Ives, Herbert E. Two-Way Television and a Pictorial Account of its Background in, Bell Laboratories Record, 1930, Volume 8, pp. 399-404, and viewable online here. Ives, Herbert E. Picture Transmission and Television in, Bell Labs Quarterly, April 1932, Volume 11, pp. 118-142. Jaw, Francis. Usage Domestics du Visiophone, Technologies de l'Information et Society, 2, 1990, pp. 89 102. French, Schoenich, von Johannes, Maley, Rolf. Die Fernsehs Brechtechnik in, Fernseh AG, 10 Jara, Berlin, Hausmittelungen aus Forschungsk und Betrieb der Fernseh Aktiengelschaft, July 1939, pp. 138 143. PDF, German, Schulte, Olaf A. The Next Best Thing to Being There, Ein Überblick zu 25 Jahren Videokonferenzforschung, An Overview of 25 Years of Videoconferencing Research, in, Median and Communications Wissenschaft, Baden-Baden, Hans Brito Institute, April 2002, pp. 551-570, PDF, German. Topic external links Debut of the first Picturephone, 1970 Video courtesy of AT&T Archives and History Center, Warren, N.J. British Pathé News Clip, Videophone 1970, a movie reel news clip on the assembly and demonstration of a prototype British General Post Office Viewphone at Taplow, Buckinghamshire, February 1, 1970, video, 116 seconds length TV tropes. Org, Videophone, includes extensive lists of videophones used in popular culture. Whirlpool Forums, movies that feature videophones Finnish 1980s videophone development at YLE Eleva Arkisto YLE Living Archives Histoire de la Television includes numerous texts of proposals of vision apparatus at the end of the 19th century <laughs>